Active citizenship is about empowerment, communications, taking on challenges, and inspiring action. With the potential to grow. I'm here uh, at the Active Citizen Summit to meet uh, people from different backgrounds. So the first the thing is enriching my knowledge about what's going around in the region. We're here to communicate, to build bridges and exchange experiences. The leaders of the future, to be connected together in one platform, in one conference, in one summit, to talk, think and share ideas in seeing what could be the potential future of the, the Arab world. The State Department is always about building the next generation of leaders, and we're always looking to promote the ideals and ideas that lead to positive change in the world. We wanted to provide a series of workshops and leadership trainings for young leaders from the Middle East and North Africa, a chance for folks to really wrestle with how do you communicate uh, a message and get your initiative or idea out to a much wider population. We believe that everybody that uses our platform is a partner. Facebook is an open platform. The Arab Spring started, and social media completely enabled that. Before the internet, before these methods of communicating with each other, there were so many people that felt a certain way and just didn't know that others existed that were like them. We want people to be able to have a chance to really see the American active citizenship uh, in action. So we had electoral internships in three cities around the U.S. Everybody knows uh, elections are a very important part of the democratic process. And our participation in, in this program will help us in, in uh, preparing for the upcoming election back home. Interning with political leaders, uh, state representatives and senators, and have a hands-on experience on different things, like, I mean, knocking on doors, talking to people about the campaign. That, that was really enriching. One of the most important things that I got from this experience is the people that I met. It is motivating to see what they're up to and what they're doing and what they've accomplished. It makes me feel like I have to do something in my own country as well. Now the time has come, the main event. Uh, I'd like to welcome up our delegates. We're gonna have two minutes. So without further ado. Tunisia today has a big challenge, build a democracy, a new state based on freedom and justice. Voting for the right people instead of voting for their friends or their cousins or their parents. Engaging men to end the violence against women in Egypt. How to get women involved into politics. Assist my people to give them the skills they need to survive in this world. Having quality education in the Arab homeland. An advocacy group for the freedom of internet in Iran. Get the voice of people inside Syria to be heard here. Youth engagement and empowerment. An e-commerce platform for NGOs. A weekly or even a bi-weekly farmer's market. A plant a tree event. Is an anti-cancer game. A social online application for women to share rides in Saudi Arabia. What I have found inspiring is to watch how they communicate with one another as if they've known each other all their lives. They have shared histories, they have shared stories, and they're energized, motivated, and excited to move ahead in a positive and productive way. In the Arab region, we're fighting for the same things, human rights, women rights, then we're fighting against corruption. So we have the same goal, so it's really important to share the experience and share the ideas, give each other advices of what we should do, what we shouldn't do. The way you make change is through groups of people. And when you have groups of people from across different regions, that's, I mean, that's how the change all happened. It was one country being affected by the other and, and watching another country and saying, oh, look, they did it, you know, why, why, why not us? There's this amazing demographic of young leaders who are ready to, to play an active role in their respective societies and who are clamoring to, to have jobs and to, to have a voice and, and to, to be active citizens in their communities and countries. I'd like to introduce a welcome video for you all from the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. It's now up to you to make decisions about what kinds of communities and countries you want. You, after all, hold the keys to a brighter future. It's up to you now to hold your governments more accountable, to move from protest to politics. No, we think every day it's that we are building something, doing something, changing something, even if it's a small or a little. Because we have ideas. Okay, we don't have the experience that the old people has, but we have uh, imagination and we have ideas, and these, if just they uh, use it in the right way, we can make a big, huge difference in our countries. Each day, we take it each day at a time, and each day is better than the, the, the day before. 
I go with the proverb that I once heard that this land is not a land that we inherited from our grandparents. It's a land that we're borrowing from our grandchildren. And I know when you borrow something, you have to keep it the same or make it better, but not make it worse.